Knock, knock, on the farmhouse door. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the quintessential performances from the last 10 years of horror cinema. <laughs> Is that your favorite? Uh huh. <laughs> I do! <laughs> Number 13, John Goodman, 10, Cloverfield Lane. I see you when you're sleeping. I know what you're doing, and I'm always watching. It's hard to surprise audiences with a resume like John Goodman's. Given his long history across nearly every genre in the book, staying fresh is quite the feat. And that's exactly where this thriller finds its secret source, by playing off of his familiarity. As Howard Stambler, the screen legend exudes a far more sinister presence than ever before. You were in shock. What are you going to do to me? I'm going to keep you alive. With his mix of caustic paranoia and volatile rage, the character is a ticking bomb, but Goodman is also able to convey the fear underneath it all. It's the desperation of a fragile man, grasping to exert control over everything around him. Problem solving always puts me in a musical mood. Michelle, you should go shower just in case. Add in the perfect rival in Mary Elizabeth Winstead, and you have yet another highlight for a veteran career full of them. Number 12, Emily Blunt. A Quiet Place. After establishing herself as a bona fide action hero in the early 2010s, Emily Blunt somehow found even more levels of badassery in this box office smash. And although she's no stranger to a tense situation, her time as Evelyn Abbott is stressful, to put it mildly. And my hands were free. It was scary. But my hands were free. Yeah. But the movie's compact runtime and breakneck pace couldn't stop her from leading a number of its most iconic moments, whether it's the nail biting bathtub sequence or with some gruesome nail stepping. Blunt carries us through. Who are we? If we can't protect them, who are we? Her performance grounds the film's fantasy elements and is key to its heart. She would later return in the sequel. There she helps pass the torch to the series' other star hero, Millicent Simmons. Number 11, James McAvoy, Split. It would be easy for a flashy performer to overdo it in this role. Instead, James McAvoy is brilliant in this cinematic juggling act. Flipping between multiple distinct personas, he showcases stunning attention to detail. Someone's coming for you and you're not gonna like it. You guys make noises in your sleep. Tell us. I'm not supposed to say. From mannerisms and postures to vocal tone and cadence, precision was his game. His level of skill becomes even more haunting in the film's final act. Your heart is pure. Rejoice! Although the character himself shouldn't be considered representative of any real mental health conditions, McAvoy's work remains acclaimed. He later reprises the role in Glass, where he gets a chance to further humanize Kevin Wendell Crumb. You really my friend? I'm gonna hold the light till the end. Till the very end. Number 10, Anya Taylor-Joy, The Witch. Few modern stars have exploded onto the scene quite as loudly as Anya Taylor-Joy. Thomason! It was I. Liar. It was I what stole him. I be the witch of the wood. Liar. Liar. I am. A huge part of that ascension is her debut in this unforgettable period piece. She is our anchor throughout this film. As a piece from Robert Eggers, the movie naturally treats us to some pretty disturbing imagery and difficult themes. What's that like to live deliciously? Yes. As Thomason is harshly vilified by those who should love her, we see the real evil present in stories like hers. She is both heartbroken and enraged by the portrayal, with Taylor Joy portraying this masterfully. Remove thy shift. Number 9, Ewan McGregor, Dr. Sleep. So tell me, pup. Are you gonna take your medicine? 
I'm not. Faced with a daunting franchise legacy, McGregor had his work cut out for him in this ambitious film. His role as Dan Torrance called for a deft balance between broad horror fantasy and intimate character drama. Luckily, McGregor was more than up to the task, painting a striking portrait of trauma and repression. As he finds new purpose in defending young Abra from Rebecca Ferguson's startling villain, we find even more layers to him. We'll see who does the screaming. Oh, we'll see indeed. She's right, you know. You should be afraid. Through these cracks, he gives us glimpses of his compassion. This success marked another win for Mike Flanagan in adapting Stephen King. Previously, he also directed a superb Carla Gugino in 2017's Gerald's Game. We need the sun to come back out. After so long, I think we deserve the sun. Number 8, Florence Pugh, Midsommar. In the same year she got awards love for Little Women, Florence Pugh became an icon in an entirely opposite genre. This sunny nightmare set the stage for a juggernaut performance. I don't oh know why I'm here, Pele. I don't know why you invited us. I, d I don't know, I don't know why, I don't okay, know why okay, I'm okay, here. Okay, I don't fine, know, okay. thank you. From the jump, we feel Danny's emotional turmoil as she strains to hold it all together. This tension makes her ultimate fate that much more impactful. In all of its terror, irony, and wicked tragedy. <laughs> Pugh is so sympathetic that even as she falls further into the arms of the Horger, we understand what she's going through. It's a display that fully immerses us with the character's POV, rendering the chaos around her even more baffling and even scarier. What? No, no, yes, Pele, yes, that yes. is not what I'm talking about. No, I'm not, not talking not about, about my family. I'm not talking about my family. I lost my parents when I was a little boy. They burned up no, in a I fire. No, I'm not talking about that. Number 7, Daniel Kaluuya, Get Out. Packed with amazing supporting talent like Catherine Keener and Lakeith Stanfield, you'd think this classic couldn't ask for much more. Oh, you all an apology? No, no, no. We're just very happy that you're yourself again. Yes. Yes, I am. Mm. And I thank God for you for calming me down. But as one of the most compelling and intelligent films of the decade, it needed a convincing lead. Enter Daniel Kaluuya. Yeah, I don't know, man. Hey, yo, my man. They were asking me about the African American experience. Maybe you could take this one. He commands each scene without overdoing it, as you can see in the first sunken place sequence. Kaluuya scored an Oscar nomination for his work. That's a rare feat given the Academy's history of snubbing horror. One hour went by, then two, then three. I just sat there. As it turns out, it was only a peek at what has since been a remarkable career, with an Oscar win and another terrific Jordan Peele collab already in the books. Number 6, Elizabeth Moss, The Invisible Man. The last decade has seen superb work come out of sci-fi horror, and Elizabeth Moss sets a new standard in this gritty yet operatic spine chiller. He said that I could never leave him. That wherever I went, he would find me. As Cecilia Cass, her journey is tormented by a cruel, abusive partner. We watch as she's pushed into the depths of despair and paranoia. Someone is 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 doing this to me. He's he's doing this to me. Moss gives a sheer tour de force in this role, at times single-handedly carrying entire scenes. Her captivating blend of naturalism and melodrama helps the world feel fully realized. I know. You don't understand. No, you don't understand. This is what he does. He makes me feel like I'm the crazy one. And when you pair that with director Lee Wan El's incredible stunt choreography, you get a performance that fires on all cylinders. Number five, Mia Goth, Pearl. Go. Oh, I'm a star! Come on. Please, I'm a star! After debuting this role in X, Goth returns as the titular serial killer in this blood-soaked prequel. The movie leans hard on her loud and brashly animated bursts of passion and ultra-violence. But alongside these moments, Goth also plays Pearl with calm and sensitivity. This duality can be seen in an incredible final act. It kicks off with a surreal audition, before Pearl has an infamous breakdown. Hitting rock bottom, she then gives an intimate monologue that runs for over five minutes. How can I be responsible for another laugh? Laugh terrifies me. 
It's hard and bleak and draining. It all culminates in one of the most memorable and unsettling end credits in recent canon. Her attempt to just smile through the pain cements the character as horror royalty. I'm so happy you're home. Number 4, Willem Dafoe, The Lighthouse Willem Dafoe does the impossible in this amazing A24 showpiece. He takes one of the most recognisable faces in Hollywood and makes it completely disappear into the role of Thomas Wake. Boredom makes men to villains and the water goes quick, lad. Vanished. The only medicine is drink. With a look and voice that genuinely feel like something from another time and place, he is vital to the film's atmosphere. Even a long speech about lobsters is totally immersive. You're fond of me lobster. Say it. Say it. Say it. Next to his partner in crime, Robert Pattinson, the pair are only our guides through this suffocating tale. They play off each other beautifully. Captured in shadow and grime, their downward spiral is totally enthralling to watch. Twas ye what changed the wind on us. Twas ye what damned us, dog. Twas ye. Will you do what you wished you'd done to old Winslow? Number three, Lupita Nyongo, us. Dual roles for one performer is a big gamble. They're not always going to work out. But what Lupita Nyongo does here might just be their pinnacle. Tether yourself. To the table. Addie, don't do it. Maybe I should put something off of you. She simultaneously crafts one of the genre's most petrifying villains and one of its most endearing heroes. Witnessing them interact creates an uncanny, disquieting effect, and Yongo's voice for her tethered self is utterly hair raising. Don't burn our house down. Their dynamic defines the entire story, with a final reveal that cashes in on the tension between them. It's no surprise that Nyong'o took home a slew of awards and nominations for her performance. <laughs> Number 2, Bill Skarsgård. It. Any adaptation of Stephen King's It would be dead on arrival without a good Pennywise. As Tim Curry demonstrated, it's a core aspect of the story. I, Georgie, am Pennywise the Dancing Clown. You are Georgie. So now we know each other. <laughs> Luckily for director Andy Muschietti, he got to work with the pitch-perfect Bill Skarsgård. For most performers, it would be difficult to be impactful without knowing much at all about your character, but he took the role to its absolute ceiling. Well, I'm Pennywise the Dancing Clown. Pennywise? Yes, meet Georgie. Georgie? Meet Pennywise. Somehow he stays expressive underneath the makeup, prosthetics, and visual effects. And above all, the physicality he brings is imposing, unpredictable, and outright creepy. Skarsgård's legacy as a genre heavyweight is only set to grow from here. I'll take him. I'll take all of you. And I'll feast on your flesh as I feed on your fear. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Toni Collette – Hereditary Nearly 20 years after her first Oscar nomination for a genre classic, horror fans everywhere thought she was a shoe in for another. Although her work in this frightful family saga was overlooked by the Academy, it will still go down in the horror history books as one of the all time best. And her head wasn't there, so I couldn't see her face. <laughs> but they were her clothes. Annie Graham is a mother consumed by grief and generational trauma. Colette is simply a force of nature in the role. Her anguish and despair are tangible. If you could have just said, I'm sorry, or faced up to what happened, 
Maybe, Tan, we could do something with this, but you can't take responsibility for anything! Ari Aster's harrowing debut feature was a phenomenon for many reasons, but its lead performance may just be its greatest achievement. All of them are Peter! I'm sorry, Steve, I don't know what I did. I don't know what I did. Peter is in danger. And I started it. Which performances blew you away? Let us know in the comments. And we are within a minute. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.